Nobody knows how or when a fire will ignite, but we do know that somewhere in the U.S. a fire department responds to a blaze every 24 seconds, and those fires have caused more than $14 billion in property damage, not to mention over 3,500 civilian casualties. On this special edition of Designing Spaces, we'll show you how to make businesses or your home a safer place. From the reasons today's fires have become more dangerous and devastating, to why installing a fire sprinkler in your new or existing home can help protect lives and your property. Designing Spaces starts now. Former firefighter and president of the National Fire Sprinkler Association, Shane Ray, has spent his whole career understanding fire, how it starts, how it spreads, and most importantly, how it can put lives in danger. He understands the importance of containing a fire. When fire ignites, it spreads rapidly. It could also smolder. Regardless of how it starts, it produces a lot of smoke and toxic gases. Those gases become superheated, and at some point, they're going to ignite and that's what kills. The causes of that fire are cooking, unattended cooking activities, heating combustibles too close to a heater, electrical, discarded material, candles, cigarettes, those things cause fire. Fire is a risk to property, to people, to pets, and to firefighters. In today's homes, the open space and the synthetic materials, that produces a lot of smoke and puts us at a greater risk than we've ever seen before. And then that smoke is fuel. That smoke also becomes superheated. And when it does, it is pushing that heat in all directions. And that's what causes the smoke to ignite. The hotter that fire gets, the more that smoke spreads. And the fire will actually spread through the smoke because that is the fuel. And then at a point when those superheated gases push the heat all the way down to the floor, the heat in the room becomes the same temperature, often over 1500 degrees. At that point, that's what we know as flashover. That's when everything in the room that's combustible that can burn, does burn, and it automatically ignites throughout the entire room. When you know that a fire started, we want you to get out, stay out, and close the door on the way out. This separates you from the fire and gives firefighters time to arrive, limiting the air to the fire. When we return, what you can do to protect your home or business against fire. Fires are fast. Their temperatures can rise to 1,500 degrees. Statistically, the smoke and toxic gases kill more people than the flames. But what can you do to protect your home or business and your life in the event of a fire? From our line of work, we consider life safety the most important aspect of everything we do. The home fire sprinkler is the first line of defense if you have a fire in your home. So the first fire sprinkler with a fusible link was patented by Henry Parmalee. Henry Parmalee owned a piano factory and he wanted it protected. Prior to that, it was through perforated pipe that would flood the whole factory. So he needed something that would be heat activated. This has a fusible link. That fusible link is only activated by heat. This, right at this device, has to be over 155 degrees before this bubble bust and breaks this glass and allows water to flow. There are many different types of sprinklers. This is a fire sprinkler that's known as a sidewall sprinkler. It is also a quick response fire sprinkler. This is a standard response fire sprinkler. You can see the difference in the two fusible links. One's larger than the other. The one that's small is a quick response. It's there to ensure life safety. 
In our side-by-side -side demonstration burns, we have two identical rooms, one with fire sprinklers, one without fire sprinklers. They both have identical furniture and they're both ignited in a waste paper trash can and they catch the curtains on fire. In the one, you'll notice that the fire sprinkler activates very rapidly and contains the fire to only that room. In the one without fire sprinklers, you'll notice that without the fire sprinkler, this goes to flashover within just a matter of a few minutes. And that's what kills and destroys. We like to say in that example that everything will dry out, but nothing will unburn. Fire sprinklers buy you time to escape which could be as little as three minutes. Fire sprinklers also buy time for the fire department to arrive, which a national average is six minutes, but it could be more. Fire sprinklers buy time, time buys life. Having a working smoke alarm reduces the chances of dying by up to 50%. However, when sprinklers are present, the risk decreases by more than 90%. For over a century, the National Fire Sprinkler Association has been advocating for the widespread acceptance of fire sprinkler systems throughout the United States. NFSA was founded in 1905. The fire sprinkler industry was fairly new in those days as to protect factories and the industries that were in a growing America. NFSA's mission though has been very pure for all these years. It is to save lives and protect property from fire through the widespread acceptance of the fire sprinkler concept. The smoke alarm will not do anything for the fire, whereas the fire sprinkler will contain the fire to the area where it starts. These two devices coupled together increase your chance of survivability by over 90%. Fire sprinklers should be installed by a licensed fire sprinkler contractor according to the licensing laws in your own state. These fire sprinklers are installed in accordance with the National Fire Protection Association standards. The products are UL listed in accordance with NFPA standards to withstand a fire in residential situations and you may even ask why they're tinted orange. And that's so that the fire sprinkler inspector, or the person that comes in and does the inspection, can easily identify the product in contrast to other building materials that you might find in a normal residential construction. Fire sprinklers should be a vital part of every home. As you can see in this home, fire sprinklers are a vital part, just like the plumbing, the mechanical, the electrical, the insulation. And we'll go in here and show you that Here's how simple the system is that comes into your home. This is where your water comes in. This is where your fire sprinkler system comes in with the water. You can see your domestic water lines and this is your fire sprinkler line. It goes out throughout a series of rooms in the house and that's what keeps you and your family safe from fire. And we're going upstairs to see where the fire sprinkler line comes up in the wall to cover the upstairs, the second floor in this case. And here's where we see the line comes upstairs to the second floor, secured properly. And we see this has a small sidewall head to cover this space. This is intended to cover this room. And this room, as we can tell, is covered by two sidewall heads. So right now, those have the covers over them so that they can put drywall up, they can finish the drywall, and it doesn't damage the sprinkler device itself. And that's very important in this case. These two fire sprinklers will adequately cover this room, which is obviously larger than 12 feet. And that's important. One of the things that the inspector will look for when he does his inspection or when she completes the inspection and final on this house. Now we're gonna go into another room to see because this, fire, this particular house has different types of fire sprinklers. In this case, that was a sidewall head. Here we're gonna go into another bedroom in the house which has a pendant fire sprinkler. The inspector is gonna make sure that this is properly installed, properly insulated, and that this room, now you'll see there's only one fire sprinkler in this bedroom, so why is that? It's smaller, so that one sprinkler will adequately cover this bedroom, and that's important. Mostly, that's a 12 foot by 12 foot, but they could go as much as 20 foot by 20 foot, 
depending on many factors in the house, from the size of the water line to the pressure coming in from the street. So that's what the inspector will check. When we return, why a retired fire safety expert is installing sprinklers in his home. Meet retired NASA firefighter and former Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Airport's fire chief, Bill Killen. He risked his life every day during his time as a part of the astronaut rescue team. As airport fire chief, he set up numerous airports around the world with their fire safety procedures and systems. My father was a firefighter, civil service firefighter. That's where I got my interest in 1946 at Bowling Army Airfield with my picture taken next to a monstrous truck called a Cardox crash truck. And then in 1950, the little community where I lived started a volunteer fire department. I wished I had a $100 bill for every time I got a spanking for chasing that truck. I turned 16 on February 13th, and I turned in my membership application on February 14th. And on March 7th, I was elected a junior member of the Potomac Heights Volunteer Fire Department, and I've been active ever since. And on June 19, 1960, I was appointed a GS-3 firefighter trainee with the Navy at the Naval Station in Indian Head, Maryland. And five years later, I had an opportunity to get involved with uh, a real race for space. And I was hired as a firefighter at the Kennedy Space Center, July 19, 1965. And in 1968, uh, they established a rescue team for the Apollo program. And I was one of the nine men selected for the original Apollo astronaut rescue team. It was also the team was trained to extract all of the astronauts, remove the bubble helmet from their suit, and place a respirator on them, place them in a stretcher chair, and evacuate them from the white room. And that was set up that we could do that, and we actually did that within less than a minute. And the members of the astronaut rescue team were selected from volunteers within the Kennedy Space Center Fire Department. Well, the astronauts were on top of that 363-foot rocket, and we were about 1,600 feet away, between 1,500 and 1,700 feet away, and the nearest person after that was three miles away. And the blast danger zone of a Saturn V rocket is 7,000 feet. And we were positioned that close in order to respond up to the pad and get into the launch umbilical tower and get into the white room to effect any rescue or to assist the astronauts if they were able to move on their own. And that my family was aware of the dangers of being a firefighter. My dad had been a firefighter. I'd been a volunteer for years. My wife knew all about the fire service. But I don't think they were really aware of the dangers that the astronaut rescue team was in when they were in a launch mode. My wife really didn't know until June of 2019 when I was writing the history of the book. And then a few years later, I was appointed fire chief for the Metropolitan Washington Airports in Washington, D.C., which was National and Dulles International Airports. I'm installing sprinklers in my home because I want to protect my wife, myself, and our home and our property. The most important thing in that house is my wife. Now, I have collected over the years a number of other historic items that I've had for my career and, and other encounters, and they're worth protecting. The one thing is we don't know how long a fire has started and burn before you discover it. So that's an unknown factor. Then you had the time to call the dispatcher, and the dispatchers dispatch the fire department and alert the people, they respond. A sprinkler system in my home is a firefighter on duty 24 hours a day. And sprinkler systems over the last 100 plus years have proven to be 99.9% .9 effective. And if a system is operational and not turned off, they work. Best investment I've made. When we come back, the importance and functionalities of a fire sprinkler. There's no doubt that a working smoke alarm is an important element for a safer home. However, Fire sprinklers are the only life safety systems that can protect occupants from a deadly blaze by actually suppressing it. Fire sprinkler systems are designed to contain fires, save lives, and reduce the cost of homeowners insurance. 
One of the things that I think a lot of the general public is afraid of, they see these TV shows, when a fire happens, every sprinkler head in the building goes off, and we know that doesn't happen. Only the sprinkler over the fire activates. And so, although these shows are entertaining, uh, they certainly send the wrong message. In 96% of the fires, only two sprinklers operate and contain it to where it starts. We like to say that fire sprinklers and firefighters are an unbeatable team. The fire sprinkler closest to the fire operates, contains the fire to that area, giving the firefighters time to arrive and rescue you and ensure that the fire's out. You know, one of the problems that we encounter when we respond to a, a fire department responds to a fire, and there are situations where the buildup of gas is in there and we could have a flashover if, if an opening happens and you get that flashover. A lot of firefighters get injured by flashover. Some even get killed. And sprinkler systems activated prevent that from happening most of the time. I, I don't know of any situation where a sprinkler facility was involved that we had a flashover. In buildings protective of fire sprinklers, firefighters are exposed to reduced temperatures and reduced toxins. As you'll notice in the fires without fire sprinklers, there's a massive amount of smoke. That smoke is cancer causing material. Firefighting is one of the most dangerous jobs there is. Uh, we lose an average of 100 firefighters in this nation every year. In buildings with fire sprinklers and in buildings where the occupants are out of the building, firefighters take less risk. So if they know you're out of the building, for example, they don't have to take an increased risk to save your life. At that point, they know they're there to save the property. The Department of Defense in the United States has one of the best fire prevention programs of any government agency. And we've saved a lot of lives in Navy and Army and Air Force Marine Corps family housing as a result of residential sprinkler systems installed. 90% of the fires are contained by a single sprinkler head. Anyone who owns a home or is thinking about building one should consider the inclusion of home fire sprinklers. Fire sprinklers are included in the National Model Building Code and the International Code. Fire sprinklers should be adopted by every state as a requirement in all new homes. The fire sprinkler system is a cost-effective way to provide life safety in your residence. It can be installed using existing water supplies coming into your home and can be installed with minimal impact on the residence. The residential sprinkler heads today have been designed in such a way that they are aesthetically pleasing to look at. They're so concealed now that you can't even really tell they're there. It's the flush plates that mount over the top of them or you can get them in different painting finishes. So there's a multitude of opportunities there for as far as hiding the head and not being visible. You'll never know they're there and hopefully you won't ever have to use them. Fire sprinklers are affordable and fire sprinklers are good for the environment. Based on past experience, a recent remodel of our home kitchen, I can promise you it's a lot cheaper than a kitchen remodel. Sprinkler systems are effective and I've seen a number of properties in the Navy that were sprinklered, that sprinkler systems saved property, saved lives. A few minutes could mean the difference between life and death, as well as losing your entire home. Fire sprinklers give you peace of mind and protect what you value the most. Sprinkler systems, you know, it's like having a firefighter on duty 24 hours a day, and they don't take sick leave. The National Fire Sprinkler Association is proud to partner with organizations and communities across this country to educate and advocate for fire and life safety from homes to high rises. For more information about how to protect your family and property from a fire, visit nfsa.org. Or you can always visit us at designingspaces.tv. information on anything you've seen on today's show or to be a part of the show go to our website designingspaces.tv